All right, welcome back to Rated Radio with your hosts, Rayburn Alexander and Shane Windham. What up, super freaks? Shane, what Billboard hit did we cover this time around? Well, give me my paper. There you go. (laughs) I'll be able to tell you. Uh, Just to be clear, first time here, we will get to end this moment and jack off Jill momentarily. Billboard, this month around, we covered Titi Me Priunto by Bad Bunny. Mm, Very nice. I liked the enunciation of those Spanish words. Yeah, I probably still screwed it up to a degree, but... (laughs) Yeah. What did you think about it? Uh, This all-Spanish club banger is hilariously petty. I laughed especially hard at the lines about already wanting a new vagina and thinking his own dick is fire. The track is listenable from beginning to end and even has a breakdown which feels like it's headed toward a full-on evolution. So it's one I don't mind listening to and think the dude's honesty is refreshing, albeit childish. But it's ultimately four stars for my taste since I find the objectification of women here to the point of seeming unable to see value in them beyond a short usage of their physicality more than a little sociopathic. A fact made worse by the vapidity of lyrics about taking selfies in VIP areas and the way the song's named after his aunt. It just crosses some lines, which I can only find comedic value in for a few listens. Well, goddamn, how woke and feminist of you. How, what did you think? I thought, well, I fully respect that I am not the tar- target demographic for this song. I'm going to chalk it up to maybe I'm just not the, at that age that I can keep up. The Puerto Rico inspirations are commendable, but with its faster paced dance direction, my knees are sore with just the thought of trying this one out. But I will most definitely try my damnedest. Three stars. Okay, okay. Shall we just go ahead and roll the intro? Yeah, let's roll that intro. So before we get started, this first artist we're going to be covering, just in this moment, was in our jam jar, Mm -hmm. put there by Kristalina, if you can believe that. Of all the people who could have recommended, it came from Lena. Yeah. Or maybe from Lena's daughter. I'm not, (laughs) never entirely sure, because I think we got some mixed lists, but interesting side note while I'm thinking about this, your mom's name is Krista. She likes to go by Kissy. Yes. And then my friend Lena does not like or at least when we were in school, didn't like Kristalina. You just call her Lena. Yeah. My takeaway here is never name your child Krista. Yes. In any form or fashion. Yes. Because even though I think it's a kick-ass name, I mean, they're not going to so use too. it. I think so, too. My mom absolutely hates it. And she even hates her middle name, which is Anne. She always, and this is not a knock to any girls named Anne out there, but my, I grew up, my mom told me, don't ever name your daughter Anne because it's an ugly girl's name. And I was like, God damn, that's, <laughs> that's harsh anyway anyway you're leading so let's get into it the first album that we covered by in this moment is blood from 2012 this was my bottom album top off to a good start already (laughs) i gave it one five out of 14 tracks 10 my top track was adrenalize yeah adrenalize or burn both of those songs two of my all-time favorite songs yeah genuinely Okay. All-time favorites. Well, I I now feel a little justified in my pick. Um, moving on to our bottom tracks. Mine, believe it or not, is Aries. Same. Okay. All right. Here we go. Vocals are pretty sick, and it makes me realize I have not heard enough female rock vocalists. Warning, if Screamo ain't your thing, then you best move on. But no joke, Maria Brink's vocals are not one to shake a stick at. This girl has got some serious power in her voice, and the band compliments it well. My only real critique is that it's a bit repetitive, and as always, the skits, with the exception of the intro, can vacate. Fans of industrial metal will be right at home with Maria Brink and co. Think the emotional grooves of Deftones, blended with the shrill brutality of Otep, and the only surprising part of this listen will be the strength of its thematic consistency. The lyrics can be chant-like in their tendency for reuse, And the complexity is sometimes lacking, but my God, what a powerhouse voice and production. I'm glad we can agree on that. Maria Brink has some serious vocal stylings. But moving on to the next album that we covered by In This Moment, 
It's Black Widow from 2014. This was my top album. Middle. I gave it six fives out of 13 tracks. 10. My top track was Sexual Hallucination, but I also wanted to do an honorable mention. Out of Hell was right up there. Okay. Continue to be torn by The Fighter and Sick Like Me. My bottom track was The Infection. Into the Darkness. In this moment plays with some different inspirations here and stays a bit closer to the line of mainstream techno metal most of the time. Imagine the type of music featured in films like Queen of the Damned, 30 Days of Night, or even the show Yellow Jackets. You can find it on Prime Video. Um, I will keep recommending that show no matter Fuck how Fuck that. Watch Beef. Anyway. Beef on Netflix. I've You've been raging about that, and you're not the <laughs> only one. I've been tempted. Anyway, back to the album. It's dark and sexy, but still manages to complement the different variations of rage and softness in Maria's voice. It's got a great balance. So if that's your thing, check it out. This disc blurs more musical boundaries than the former and is a great fit for Halloween fans. Most of it feels more in line with the likes of Rob Zombie or Lords of Acid. The parts do give off Melanie Martinez vibes as well, particularly toward the end. Its emo theatrics do drag it in spots, and I'm still confused by the way an album called Black Widow has such a soft ending, but it is a very solid spin if you're seeking variety from the group. Okay, now I feel like I, I proved to you that I listened to the album because we're, we're saying the same things. Again, feel validated as to why this is my top album. Love Melanie Martinez. Love Rob Zombie. Lords of Acid, we will revisit. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I was still, a little harsh. I'm still very confused by that. I know. Anyway, moving on to our next album that we covered by In This Moment. It was Ritual from 2017. Surprise, surprise. No surprise, this is my middle album. And bottom for me. I gave it one five out of 12 tracks. Seven. My top track was Oh Lord. Roots. And my bottom track was Salvation. Agreed. With that. I will definitely agree there. In comparison, this one is a bit disappointing. The sound is not as grand and creativity seems to be a bit middle of the road. The metal screamo influence seems to be getting less and less incorporated. Repetitive, but I will chalk that up to lazy songwriting. That may sound harsh, but trust and believe, I'm fully aware that it is still better than anything I could ever create myself. Well, at least you got that in there. Yes. <laughs> I'm a critic, but... <laughs> but I don't know shit anyway. <laughs> what the fuck do I know? It's mostly the first third of this disc that missed me. Equal parts The Cure, Marilyn Manson, and Lady Gaga. It's too much lush layering, religiosity, and uninteresting melody work to be memorable in that portion. Beyond that, however, it does mostly give more of what I want from the group. Tracks like Roots and Twin Flames ultimately make this worth sticking with, but the sparse pop rock at the outset is mediocre, evidenced by the Phil Collins cover not earning five stars, In the Air Tonight being a typically easy win for covers. Even the White Wedding rework feels trite. Mm -hmm. Glad I stuck with the LP, though. Yep, I'm glad you mentioned those covers because I was severely disappointed. I was like, how can you fuck up In the Air Tonight? <laughs> Come on. Well, speaking of covers, uh, while we're here, they've also done... Call Me by Blondie, They Do Closer by Nine Inch Nails, mm -hmm. Creep by Radiohead, We Will Rock You by Queen, Fly Like an Eagle by Steve Miller Band, that one being my favorite. Oh, really? Yeah. And I'm not a Steve Miller fan, yeah. generally speaking, but that cover makes that song something I always want to listen to did from they, them. Did they keep the... You'll just have to listen. Um, okay. I want to uh, mention some music <laughs> videos while we're here. So my personal three favorite music videos from this group, which I tend to think this group releases odd music videos. There's, there tends to be something that's off-putting about a lot of them for me. If you're saying something is odd, it must be really odd. It's really... It's not that bad. There's just something... Most of them don't feel in line with what I would have imagined. Oh, for the music video to look like? Yeah. Okay. But sometimes... They fucking nail it. And it's not in this list here, but The Fighter is a fantastic music video. But for me, my top three would be Big Bad Wolf, The In-Between, and Sick Like Me. Okay. All awesome music videos. Maybe something to put on the mentions if you feel like it. I don't know. And while we're talking about covers, what's interesting is uh, I think the first song I heard by this group, probably not the actual first song, but the one that really caught me mm -hmm. was Roots. But going back to Adrenalize... 
for some reason in my head when I first heard that song, I actually thought it was a Deftones cover. I mm-hmm. couldn't stop thinking. It's Deftones. It's I don't Deftones. I don't actually remember this being a Deftones song, but it sounds like a Deftones song just sung by this amazing yeah. lady. Yeah. Um, not so much. Yeah. <laughs> I guess Deftones should cover Adrenalize. Maybe that would be the, the takeaway. Well, since we're talking about similar sounding artists, um, some for me would be Hole. Flyleaf, obviously, The Pretty Reckless, Marilyn Manson, DeAntford, and even, and do not kick me under the table, Ashley Simpson in a weird way, like when she started getting into like her grunge era, yeah. some of the the tones that um, Maria hits reminds me of Ashley Simpson, which- I could follow that. You know, I think that there was a lot more potential for the whole Ashley Simpson thing if the whole shitty SNL mm. thing didn't <laughs> Mm, amongst I don't, I don't other know things about that. i just i mean she could have grown as an artist who knows i will say that i think maria brinks probably a thousand times more yes, talented I, but... <laughs> I will i will agree but maybe maybe in her lazier moments maybe when she's a little tired maybe she sounds a little like ashley simpson but in the same regard that style of voice reminds me of courtney love Apparently, I need to listen to The Pretty Reckless, by the way, because I keep thinking that's a country band. No, so. <laughs> not a country band. Uh, in This Moment's music makes me feel like I'm a phoenix turning into flames. Okay. Which kind of just takes from their lyrics. Uh, some facts about In This Moment. Uh, their influences include Deftones, Pantera, Black Sabbath, Patti Smith, and the Rolling Stones. Originally, the guitarist Chris Howarth? Howarth? I don't know how you However you it. prefer to say it. Anyway, anyway. Our <laughs> apologies, Chris. <laughs> the guitarist wanted a guy singer and was pleasantly surprised when he ran into Maria. Changed his whole perspective, as most women do. No. <laughs> <laughs> this one would change your perspective for sure, Lord. But I'm not here to objectify her in any way because that's not why I turn no. to this music. No, not at all. My opinion is that this outfit gets unfairly dismissed as subpar or not serious because their lead singer is undeniably beautiful. But she also has one of the greatest voices to ever grace any genre of rock, and the atmospheric bombast of the music they make does stand out, even if its darkness can be overly basic on occasion. This is one of those groups capable of building their musical monsters to a fever pitch. We didn't even cover half of their disco today, and their next album is getting ready to drop. If you're a trauma survivor, or if female empowerment is important to you, I honestly don't understand how in this moment hasn't caught your attention by now. Here, here. Let's take a motherfucking break. All right, Shane, we got a song list. And you chose... Surprisingly epic songs. Which, all right, that's all I got to say. What did you pick? Story time? Yeah, story time. Tell me about it. Uh, Beauty and the Beast by Stevie Nicks. Okay, why? Because it is surprisingly epic to me. Okay. You see a song title. One, I'm... I almost chose a Fleetwood Mac song. I shit you not, but I didn't. Spoiler. Fleetwood's kind of understandable for me, you know, because it's a whole ass band. Yeah. Stevie Nicks, I I know she writes her own music. I know she's amazing, but I don't tend to think. You see a song title like Beauty and the Beast, and I'm immediately thinking, okay, Romance. she's she's covering like a the Disney song. Yeah, that's totally not what this is. She is a powerhouse, so I'm not surprised. But I already knew that. Continue. I must have sat in my lonely office listening to this song hundreds of times in the lead up to leaving the job I am now ironically doing once again. As a poor kid from the wrong side of the tracks, I was used to being able to dream without limitations, but I wasn't used to money. Suddenly, I was financially sound, finding more and more limitations on my dreams. I'd gone from a thriving social web to having only a few friends, most of those remaining relationships strained by distance and a lack of free time. My heart was broken and breaking in a number of ways, and as is my constant reality, though it saddened me to follow happiness for the loss of all those other potentialities, It was in that office listening to this song that I decided to cement my future with Megan. A decade later, it's interesting to reflect on what an epic decision that was. I was in that office on day one of our opening, that location. Mm -hmm. I was there on the last day as well. 
That entire building is now gone, actually, but I still have this song, and I still have my love. There are times when I've regretted even my best decisions. I'm not sure I'll ever know what it is to be happy for what I have without being sad for everything I lost. To have said happiness, she and I are different in more ways than I've yet to even comprehend. But to be a beast, taking a chance on beauty, no matter what the future holds, remains the most fruitful risk I've ever taken. And and your pick... (laughs) I feel like the majority of my responses are aww, because I just don't know what to say. Because if I say anything, I'll be like, ah, shut the fuck up. What's your, what's your song? You're anyway. just jealous. I'm not jealous. Because your man doesn't start a podcast and say nice things about That's you. That's fine. I, he, he does other things. Anyway, moving on. Uh, my pick is The Show Must Go On by Queen. What kind of other things? Dirt and nasty not things. Yeah. Right now. Anyway. I do those things too and I'm still sweet. So I'm just. I'm just Shane, fuck right <laughs> off. Can we talk about my <laughs> go ahead, pick? Go ahead. The Show Must Go On by Queen. As I am beginning and slowly learning that not every feeling, thought, and opinion needs to be expressed, I am gradually understanding that while I do have a sympathetic audience, No matter how many times you encourage others to seek the help and path that it takes to make life worth living, it ultimately falls out of your control. And if someone in your life refuses to change, you as an individual have to evaluate whether or not having a close relationship with that person outweighs your disappointment in their actions or lack thereof. Because remember, we only accept the quality of love we think we deserve. And until we come to a happy conclusion, the show goes on. Here, here. Let's go talk about Jack Off Jill. And before we start in here, I will add that Jack Off Jill was not in our jam jar. Yeah. I didn't clarify that at the beginning. I apologize. Uh, First album that we covered by Jack Off Jill was Sexless Demons and Scars from 1997. This was my top album. Middle. I gave it three fives out of 14 tracks. Five. My top track was Girl Scout. I'm agreeing. It's so good. It's very good. It kicks ass. Anyway, my bottom track was Everything's Brown. My Cat. Okay, see, I thought about it. Especially after the line, if I could fuck my cat, I would. (laughs) That didn't sit right with me as you are now a cat owner. I think it's a song about pussy, Raven. I know. But still, if you're not really listening to it and it's taken out of context, it really makes you uncomfortable. (laughs) The lyrics definitely uh, pushed me away from this one. I didn't necessarily mind the sound, but there's a song by Lords of Acid called Pussy. Mm Mm-hmm. That is corny. You know, over time, it's really lost its appeal for me. Yeah. This one's worse than that. Okay. Think angsty Barbie punk screamo badass ladies that are singing exactly what's on their mind. As they mention cats and the patriarchy and sex and so much more. Music like this makes me want to get a nose ring and listen to Bikini Kill. Tori Amos, Fiona Apple, and Alanis Morissette. If early 90s alternative or a punk jam band sounds fun, you may dig this more than I do. Pretty sure my sisters would love this disc, in fact. Think Kitty mixed with Metric or Aqua, and you're nearing the ballpark. For me, it's a punchier but less polished Veruca Salt. The sweet to scream vocals are easily recognizable, but the style can be jarring and the instrumentation can feel like baseline rhythm keeping. Still, I could happily let this play in the background for good times. I'm glad you said something about metric. I definitely get the metric vibes. Moving on to the next album. It's Clear Hearts, Gray Flowers from 2000. This is my middle album. Top. I gave it three fives out of 15 tracks. Ten. My top track was Rabbitine. Author unknown. And my bottom track was Witch Hunt. Witch Hunt, yeah. Yeah. A little darker this time around, but still keeping true to those angsty female roots. These girls are not afraid to just jam out and genuinely seem to mesh well together. My only critique is that the vocals are not very quote unquote pretty, but I'm almost certain that that's the exact fucking point. The beats are sick 
and sticking to their vision has some serious payoff. Like a blood-flavored lollipop, this will have some wicked appeal for certain kinds of music lovers, particularly of the goth punk variety. If you love Hole's Celebrity Skin and Cole Chambers' Chamber Music albums, this one serves as a terrific middle ground. It has some off-vocal moments, and things like how Under Joyd's bass line sounds just like Collective Soul's Shine, but on the whole, this is terrific. The group's potential solidly realized. The last album that we covered by Jack Off Jill is Humid Teenage Mediocrity from 2006. This was my bottom album. Agreed. And also, what is it about Humid Teenage Mediocrity? When you're going to say it, you, you immediately want to say human. I don't know. Humid Teenage me Like, you have to purposely humid, space. You have to accentuate the D. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you do. Mm, accentuate the D. It's an uh, awesome album name. I'll give it that. Yeah. Then they're, I touch on it, but they're super creative with their song titles. What was it? Uh, Strawberry. Gashes. Strawberry Gashes. Yeah. Excellent word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is my bottom album. Agreed. I gave it six fives out of 24 tracks. Three. My top track was Kringle. Boy Grinder. Okay. And my bottom track my sister will probably kill me, is Yellow Brick Road. Spit and Rape. Yeah, that one's... While I've enjoyed their creative as hell song titles thus far, my worry is that some of their songs may start to sound similar, especially when laid out in a large album like this. We are back to being a little bit more playful here because well than half of this album features remakes of the Sexless Demons and Scars album. But don't let my comment before frighten you away. The repetition works for me, but it may not work for some. If they'd cut the 10 songs here with previously released versions, this disc would be much easier to swallow. And I could even see tentatively recommending it to Misfits fans, early AFI fans, or maybe even Rollins Band fans. The quality is lacking, yet surprisingly competent. It reminds me mostly of demo B-side material from Sexless Demons and Scars, which it probably is, though a few of these songs would have been winners there. Here, they're a bit too unpolished for me, and the rehashing is overkill. Some similar sounding artists, since we talked about it earlier. Uh, Bikini Kill, Metric, Tori Amos, Fiona Apple, Letters to Cleo, Alanis Morissette, and even B-52s. Yeah, I could see it. Originally, they were called Jack and Jill, but <laughs> yeah, I know. But singer Jessica. Not and, but in. In, yes. I, <laughs> singer uh, Jessica with a K, who is actually the ex of Marilyn Manson, who helped founded this group uh, with Jessica. He suggested that they change the name to Jack Off Jill, and it stuck. This band was founded in Fort Lauderdale, Florida in 1992, and they are of the new metal, riot girl punk, and alternative rock categories. They actually broke up in 2000, but reunited for a tour in 2015. I'm going to make a Jack and Jill shirt and put it on the merch. <laughs> okay. I'm totally going to do that. Jack and Jill. By the way, their music makes me feel like I'm wearing blood for lipstick. I mean, they did do that back in back in the day. I'm they used sure to they prick did. Their finger, and mm -hmm. use it. It's so metal. I tried to find some music video stuff here, but there are surprisingly few from this group. Yeah, I was trying to find more information about them too, and there wasn't a whole lot, which is strange because they've literally been around for such a long time. There's just, I know they took that hiatus, but still, yeah, there's not a whole lot. I don't really know what's going on there. I'm pretty sure there was. You know, some uh, some spit and rape there in their career that kind of, I don't know if it led the lead singer off a cliff, but probably away from a spotlight and away from the, the realm of music making and touring. And yeah, I don't know. Well, all I'm going to say is maybe being the girlfriend of Marilyn Manson does something. Do you? Maybe you need to take a break. Maybe. I feel like everybody that he's dated has stepped away a little bit. You know, Dita Von Teese stepped away for a while. Who is uh, Evan Rachel Wood stepped away a little bit from acting. I mean, not to knock Marilyn Manson, but the man does seem, or they, I don't know how he identifies, seems exhausting. You know way more about the lives of celebrities than I ever care to. Like, I mean. Just, just listening to who dated who is exhausting. I have just, I've. <laughs> I've seen pictures of them together and like all him and all of his girlfriends, they just seem like they're a very well matched couple. Like him and Dita Vantes seem like they matched him and 
Evan Rachel Wood and when she was going through like her dark period, but when she was doing True Blood, they were really well matched. I don't know. It's yeah. just he and he dates beautiful women. I mean, sure. hey, but they also say he's got a huge penis. <laughs> All right. Well, back to this group. I do think most of what you're going to find if you're listening to the whole discography is that they start off sounding quite a bit like Veruca Salt. Mm -hmm. And then right in the middle, right at that sweet spot, you get Veruca Salt meets Kitty. It's it's fucking <laughs> grand. Sadly, what we covered today is all there is to be covered. Mm -hmm. And yes, I'm honestly saddened by that fact because Jack Off Jill had more than a highly memorable band name. Their sound is sometimes so wonderfully at odds that it could easily have been as addicting as sugar and salt. It is, after all, rare to get such sweetly popish vocals broiling their way to a metal edge, and the punk grindage delivered by the rest of the band is enjoyable cake for that quirky vocal icing, if nothing else. Each of these three discs were significantly different experiences, and Clear Heart's Grey Flowers should be held up as a classic in the genre. Mm -hmm. Well, I have two very important question questions to ask you. Mm -hmm. Number one, would you have left the name, the original? I like Jack and Jill better. Okay. It's funnier to me. Uh, Jack Off Jill is definitely going to spread more. It's going to be more viral. Okay. In my opinion, while I do like both names, I think the Jack in Jill, it's like, it's an incest joke because aren't Jack and Jill siblings? Hadn't thought about that. So incest, you have incest in one hand and then you have, to me, Jack Off Jill, it's, it's female masturbation. So you kind of have that. I think that the reason why they went with Jack Off Jill is because it's got that female empowerment element. I, I know guess. you're saying words. I'm just over here. I've got <laughs> I've got Prince's Jack You Off playing in my head right now. Is well, it now I have Get sad? Off stuck in my head. Is it sad, by the way, that I don't even ask you what my you opinion. thought? Because I know you're just going to tell me. Okay. It's Noted <laughs> for next time. Got it. So what's the second question? Second question. Who won for you this month? Uh, that would be in this moment. And Jack Off Deal won for me. That's surprising. Really? A I little, didn't think a so. A little bit. Okay. Well, I'm full of surprises. Anyway. I guess that last album did have 24 tracks. It was, so, yeah. it was too long. I agree with you. They shouldn't have redid the sexless demons and scars. They shouldn't have added that. I think it would have been a better album if they would have just left that out. What were your averages, Rayburn? Uh, for all of them? No, for the bands. Like, oh. total. Um, Jack Off Jill was a 3.41 and in this moment was a 3.35. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, they're still, they're still pretty close. I like Maria's vocals better than I like the lead singer of Jack Off Jill, but I like the band Jack Off Jill as opposed to the band of In This Moment. I could see that. So I think that the Jack Off Jill has that angsty, punk, dirtier sound that I think I gravitate more towards as opposed to some of the other punk quote unquote bands that we've covered but i'm not if i could take maria's vocals and maybe use jack off jill's band maybe that would be better but i also think that they would constantly be fighting over like is the vocal is the vocals the standout is the band the standout so i'll just leave them where they are and enjoy them for what they are i wouldn't change in this moment okay but that's me well that is just you i am I'm quite in love with that group. Right. Not everything they produce, clearly, but... Well, I had never heard... I had never sat down and listened to In This Moment. I knew about In This Moment, uh, but I never sat down. And I had never even heard of Jack Off Jill. So um, I walked away with two very big positives this month. And I'm going to call that a win. So be sure to join us in two weeks if you are a subscriber. We're going to talk about lists of five different things. I went with things you'd drop if killed in a video game. Which I was very confused yes. about. Yes, we'll talk about it. Yep. Don't, don't, don't spoil it. I'm not going to spoil it. And then yours was bucket list, things to do before you die. Was that am I, something like that? What are you talking about? Your list of five things. Oh, yeah, that's my list. Things to do before you die. Things on your bucket list yes. is what you wrote, technically. Yes. Okay, sorry, I had to look. Yes. I was very confused. All right. The other thing is if you are returning in a month, which I seriously recommend this time around, it's going to be Usher versus The Weeknd. The Weeknd. <laughs> Fuck yes. 
So uh, excited. Albums we'll be covering by Usher are My Way from 97, Confessions from 04, and Raymond v. Raymond from 2010, or Raymond versus Raymond. Which it's I have you, some feelings about. That's how you're mm-hmm. supposed to say it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the weekend. Don't hate me. I picked what I picked. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. We will eventually cover them all. But Beauty Behind the Madness from 2015, Starboy from 2016, and After Hours from 2020. I wish we could cover four albums because he just came out like he came out with Don FM. But all solid choices. Tune into that episode to hear what we thought One about month Usher. From now. Yeah, Usher and the weekend. But anyway. That's going to do it for this one. Hit up our Spotify playlists. Visit our merch shop. Share our show with your friends. Come find us on social media to let us know what you think. And subscribe for our bonus content. And until next time, fill your world with music. You were hoping I had something, huh? Yep. <laughs>